how to read a fiction. I would like to start with a few slides about the general instructions and suggestions about reading a fiction. You know that reading a fiction is not like reading any other book. You know that fiction is a part of imaginative literature. Hence, the base of this book is imaginative reconstruction or imaginative construction of reality. Therefore, it requires an attitude of imaginative engagement or imaginative understanding of the text. I would say approach it without any destruction and desire to comprehend it, especially when you plan to work on it for assignment, article, or research purpose. Some factors to keep in mind while reading a fiction. Think about the narrator. Who is telling the tale? And then what is the context or background of the story? Locate the order or structure of the narrative or otherwise. Do you see any order or structure in the narrative or the absence of any order or structure? Comprehend the style and relation between the theme and the form of the novel. And read the novel with the standard literary terms in your mind. I would say that read to read a fiction to develop a point of view and correctly record it. Record it means take notes or take notes effectively. And taking notes will help you streamline the thoughts and follow a clear line of thinking. Especially when you are working on assignment or research project, these notes will help you. Uh, uh, get to the meaning of the text in a coherent and organized fashion. Then determine the tone or mood of the text. It may not be easy to get to the tone or mood of the text right from the beginning, but when once you start reading it, once you get into the thematic and narrative structure of the fiction, you would be able to understand the tone or mood of the text. You would be able to identify whether it is a humorous text or a text based on satire or a text based on some historical narratives, whatever. Uh, reading will help you get to the real and original mood or tone of the text. Read to comprehend the connection between plot, character, and dialogue. Summarize each chapter as you complete it. Read to form an opinion about the text. Reading reviews on the text will also help you take notes and develop a point of view. Importantly, consider where and how the particular text support or challenge your established point of view or opinion. Now, how to read Muhammad Hanif's Red Birds. We can approach this text from historical, theoretical, and biographical perspectives. Biographically speaking, Redbird is Muhammad Hanif's third novel. Hence, the knowledge about his previous novel, The Case of Exploding Mangoes and Our Lady of Alice Bertie, will help us and enhance our ability to form an opinion about this particular novel. In the first place, the text Redbird is not specifically about Pakistan. Instead, it narrates the U.S. war against an unnamed third world Muslim country. Hence, it makes development in terms of themes as it focuses on broader issues of war and post-war phase of American policy in the unnamed Muslim country. The target, however, is broad too, which is to satirize both American and Muslim culture and highlight gray areas rather dark areas in both uh, the American and the third world Muslim countries culture. Points to consider while reading Red Birds. First, who is the narrator of Red Birds? Second, what is the context of the novel? Third, what are the narratives and narrative technique or techniques? What is the style of this fiction? What is the tone or mood of the text? How does Hanif use literary terms like plot construction and symbols to develop narratives in the text? A few words about narrators. The narrators in the novel are multiple. 
Each chapter, in fact, has a different narrative who aims to develop a point of view which carries broader implications for understanding American war, American war against terror, and degeneration of the third world Muslim culture. Among the prominent narrators, we have Major Ali and Flower Body, or Lady Flower Body, both represent U.S. military and U.S. aid official, respectively. Then we have Momo, Bro Ali, Father Dear, and Mother Dear from the local population. Above all, we have Mutt, a philosopher dog, a critic, and a moral character of the novel. Hanif ingeniously uses red bird as symbol of the blood or souls of the dead. It also symbolizes the author's dispassionate and objective affiliation with the dead. From that point of view, red birds are an inclusive symbol of those who died in the war, irrespective of their nationality or religion. Let's talk about the character of Major Ali, who is the principal narrator from the American side. In the first place, he is a befitting reflection of the alienated and estranged character in the war. But mainly he helps us understand the American war strategies, which are deeply based on technological warfare through the use of drones and other small weapons of destruction. He also helps reader evaluate the American focus on professionalism in army to reference to a number of training modules which a soldier has, has to undertake before he is sent to the active participation in war. He also helps the reader understand the American war philosophy, which takes war as a corporate business where destruction and reconstruction are two part of the war strategy. Above all, he also demonstrates a deeper level, level of sickness per, permeating his personal life, which is a realistic representation of the impact of war on the soldier's personal and psychic conditions. A few words about the character of Momo. Another narrator, he, he's a local boy. He's ambitious, dreamy, but shrewd. He wants to become an entrepreneur and earn billions by selling sand to the American companies for reconstructing war-ravaged country. He's also an instance of modern Muslim youth who is more interested in business than war. A few words about the character of Mott. He is undoubtedly the principal narrator in the novel. And what a cre creation he is. He is a critic, a philosopher, an objective thinker, a superior character because he is free from both greed and duplicity, and above all, a rich source of laughter and humor in the text. The slide contains a few of textual examples. So please read example to have an idea of his thinking, objective, uh, his objective thinking, as well as his ability to excite laughter and fun in the text. A few words about the character of Father Dear. He's a typical patriarch, a greedy money-minded person who has lost respect in the family. Even Momo, his son, is disrespectful to him. He's called Mr. Fix for the Americans, and he's also their local agent for propagating sex education amongst the local. Among the local. Mother Dear is another character in the novel. Unlike Father Dear, he, she is a typically typical oppressed woman, a victim of patriarchy. However, towards the end of the novel, she takes charge of leading the local to rescue their abducted children from the American hangar. Otherwise, she is mostly found uh, crying and expressing her helplessness against a strong and dominating father dear. Our final character, lost character, is Flower Body, Lady Flower Body. She's an American official, an academician, a researcher, and who is part of broader American policy to collect data about the young Muslim mind. She is a source of laughter as well, as she is found distributing fake Cadbury chocolates among the youth to become friendly with them, but relishes genuine Cadbury in privacy. She is an opium addict and a source of discord between mother dear and father dear.
the context. War is the context of the novel. It's war against an unnamed Muslim country. It is also a part of the war on terror. But when the novel opens, the war has almost ended. So there is more focus on surgical operations, some air strikes, or strikes through drones. Style. The novel is mainly in the form of an interior monologue. We don't find the character engaged in dialogue. All characters, the human and the non-human, are mostly for reflecting and thinking about different aspects and issues. The tone or the mood. The novel is mainly or basically a satire based upon circle, irony and wit. Wit is the most essential part of understanding and evaluating satire and it takes this novel to another level of satiric representation of the American and the local cultures. Finally, the novel is mainly humorous. So there's plenty of fun and laughter in the, in, in the text. Themes. Fundamentally, Redbird is a satire. It is a satire against American duplicity. And this word duplicity is repeated several times in the text. And obviously it draws attention to double standard double standard of destruction and then reconstruction or promises of reconstruction of the war destroyed country. Um, we, we have a number of examples of duplicity. For example, first American bomb and then they provide humanitarian assistance. They even provide uh, therapies for traumatic stress disorder. And uh, we find American very generous in providing medicine and food and shelter for the locals, the locals have lost home and infrastructure, or rather everything in the country. So uh, in that case, it is a satire against uh, American war and American policies in this war ravaged country. Other themes. Among the other theme, we have a very subtle narration of cultural misconceptions between the Americans and the locals. For instance, the novel points attention to misconception or deeper level of mistrust between the American and the local. The Americans have employed a researcher, Lady Flowerbird, in fact, to collect data about the young Muslim mind. The phrase young Muslim mind is repeated several times and it draws attention to more profound implications for devising future policies about the Muslim and a kind of preemptive strategy to deal with the Muslims in the future. Likewise, Americans presume that spreading sex education among the locals might create a kind of liberal mindset that is willing to accept and tolerate the Western culture easily. The novel is also explicit about greed and backwardness of the locals. It creates a kind of narrative where everyone is interested in money making be at the cost of selling children, placing chips for the American drones, or spreading sex education among the locals. The novel also narrates typical patriarchy in a third world Muslim culture. Here are a few questions for the reader. The questions might help them in developing a point of view about the text or about its structure and its thematic diversity and variety. Question number one, how is it an instrument of satire? How is this novel an instrument of satire? What are the post-colonial issues? Can we take this novel as a representation of post-colonial issues? If yes, what can be, what are those issues? Does it follow the thematic and stylistic feature of the previous novels? Or do you see any similarity or difference the difference between the theme and style of Redbird and the previous novels of Muhammad Ali. Oh, does it demonstrate development in terms of theme, style, or narrative technique? A few more questions. What are the unique literary elements in the text? 
Can we take Redbird as an instance of modern fiction? Does it represent postmodern perspectives on war, culture, and especially humanism? How has war been represented here? Is war a tragedy in the text? Primarily, what is the impact of war on non combatants or common people? Think about the issues of abducted children. Think about using local for guiding the drones and reflect on war and the capitalist policies of reconstruction to answer this question. What are symbols in the text? Can we take dog, a mutt, or red bird as a symbol? What are the stylistic innovations? How will you compare red bird with other Pakistani fiction? Is it a complete picture of our culture, history, and the present? What is silent in the text? Think about the absence of optimistic values in the text. Does it represent the clash of culture scenario? And what are the stylistic, sorry, the structural feature of the text? Think about the narrator and the role in the text. For more on Red Birds, uh, watch my previous videos on it. Videos cover debates on humanism, post-humanism, and anti-humanism in the text. A video covers much in particular. Both videos will help you a lot in understanding or comprehending the text at a broader and deeper level.